Relive the magic that the grand old game can witness at any given time with Major League Baseball's Superstar Shortstops. Featuring the sensational talents of Nomar, A-Rod, and Jeter, the golden age of shortstops. Don't miss the awesome ride that Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire took us on during the unforgettable race for the record. Catch all the postseason action with the official 1999 World Series Championship video. Ball game over. World Series over. Generations of heroes, from Willie Mays to Barry Bonds, come to life as the legends of the past mirror the legends of tomorrow. There's a new home run champion. The Record Breakers spans the incredible feats from the summer to remember. So order now and get MLB's amazing lineup. Call 1-888-244-8837. season dawned with the joy of spring and the anticipation of youth. Fresh off its record-breaking 98 season, baseball's final year of the century had the promise to be something special. A storyline filled with wonder. Would he do it again? Would he reach 3,000? Could he actually get better? From the first crack of the bat, the promise was fulfilled. To the human eye, it was quite often magical. To the human heart, it was simply overwhelming. Major League Baseball Productions presents MLB 99, a season of heroes. High fly ball, deep center, go! There it is, 62 folks, and we have a new home run champion. He is the man in the United States. I am the man in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa took us to new heights in 1998 when they both shattered the single season home run record. But who knew that in 99 we'd see an encore? McGuire picked up right where he left off and once again reached the limits of our imagination. McGuire puts his stamp on this season again. My goodness, that man is strong. Swing and a long, 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 long home run for Pete oh. Mack. Unbelievable where he hit that ball. It hit better than halfway up on the scoreboard in right center. At the All-Star Game in Boston, he put on a show for the ages. Mark McGuire has returned to Fenway Park. Mark! the Massachusetts Turnpike. This one could be all the way to me. Even Sammy had to be impressed. But Sosa was just as impressive as the season unfolded. There was no doubt that a slugging sequel was at ballparks everywhere. There was magic in 1998. There is magic in 1999. Sammy cracks a line drive, deep left field, gone! Sammy hits oh, a high drive, yes, deep left yes. center, Cubs win, 
Cup win. I don't believe it. Cup win. In fact, Sosa became the first man ever to hit 60 home runs in a season twice. Hit deep to center. Hits him back. 60. Uh, last year, Mark, you know, he 70. He break one record and come to this year, you know, and I got to be the first one to uh, break another record. The first guy to be 60 again and to enjoy this some more in last year. Sammy and uh, Mark has taken this thing a little beyond what everybody suspected. Sosa had his moment in the record books, but Big Mac also earned a spot when he became the fastest man ever to do this. McGuire pops one into center field. It sounded better than the first. At the wall, number 500. The 16th player in Major League history to hit 500 home runs. You know, I've always said that, you know, when you're retired and your stats are done and they're set, that's when you can sit and reflect on where you are in the history of the game. With his first 500 behind him, Mark blasted his way to another home run title. Long drive, center field, see you later! Number 65! 135 home runs in just two seasons for McGuire. 264 home runs in two years between Mark and Sosa. But they weren't the only hitters in 1999 to make history. There's a drive, right center field, base hitter, there it is! Ho ho, doctor! And the fans are already on their feet anticipating this at bat for Wade Barnes. They're standing on their feet, pulling Tony Gwynn in. A moment to savor. Wade Boggs and Tony Gwynn. The two most prolific hitters of their generation, just a heartbeat apart. We're sort of mirror images of each other. He's the nationally counterpart of myself. We've never had to go against each other for a batting title. So I've always got to admire Tony from, from a distance. In 19 years with the San Diego Padres, Tony has mastered the science of hitting. Everything that I study, everything that I talk about, as far as balance, flexibility, getting in a good launching position, locking yourself in, having a good cradle, and have a flow to your body, Tony falls into that category. He's one of the ones that I really study. It's almost like he looks out there and says, oh, they're going to play me over here. Well, I'm going to hit the ball over here. And, and uh, I, I firmly believe that he can do that. Look at Tony Gwynn, the front shoulder staying in there, and he just serves one through the shortstop position. Done again beautifully by Tony Gwynn. We've never really been rivals because he didn't have to deal with me in the American League and I didn't have to deal with him in the National League. And so we've always had the freedom to really, you know, pick up the paper and see how the other one was doing and honestly pull for the other one. Like Tony, Wade Boggs began his career in 82 with Boston where he came out of the gate at a mind-boggling pace. You know, he was just, the first seven years were ungodly. He's the first player since 1900 to have seven straight 200 hit seasons. He's got the perfect swing for Fenway. You know, every time you see that inside out swing going to left, you just imagine him just hitting it off the green monster. So much of his success is ability to use that wall. We have our, our long drawn out battles in certain at bats. He, he's good at fouling off pitches that are, are close, but he really doesn't want to, you know, put in play. He'll just foul them off. He's getting his share hits off of me. Base hit, Wade Boggs. I think he's patient. You know, he's really patient. He doesn't swing at too many balls. How does he take that pitch? <laughs> it was only fitting that Boggs and Gwynn ended up on the same path to 3,000 hits. I'm churning. I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty nervous about it. This is milestone territory. We are ready for baseball in Montreal. We're ready for history. Tony Gwynn will be the 22nd man of baseball history to get to 3,000 with his next base hit. This hit is a byproduct of knowing what you're doing at the plate. The pitch. There's a drive. Right center field. Base hitter. There it is. Ho oh, ho, doctor. You can hang a star on that, baby. A star for the ages for Tony Gwynn, number 3,000. I came out of the box, all of a sudden, it's, it's rolling in right field. I'm like, that's it. That's that's 3,000, you know? And uh, so you kind of go through your normal, come around the bag, stop, plant, come back. And then in this rush 
of guys coming over to congratulate you. Somebody said, look who's behind you, and I turned around and it's my mom. You know, right away I grabbed her and said, happy birthday. Then my wife and daughter and niece come out, so I hugged and kissed all three of them. Then he sought a refuge, a quiet place to reflect on his greatest influence. I just knew I needed to be somewhere by myself for a second, and I came in here in this tunnel, basically just broke down thinking about my dad because he was the one who, you know, saw all these things happening in the course of my career that I couldn't see. I didn't see. I didn't see, you know, winning batting titles, I'm getting to 3,000 hits, but in my own vision, I couldn't see it, and he saw it for me, and so to get this hit tonight, I really wished he could have been here because uh, I think he really would have enjoyed it. Almost 24 hours later, in Tampa Bay, to get to a pinnacle that classifies all great hitters and to be a part of that elite group is, is breathtaking for me. I've waited 18 years to have this moment to walk to the plate and just need one hit. And I was just enjoying the moment and, and going through my mind what I needed to do. Check of the runner and the 2-2 swung on and a long drive! Hit deep to right! That baby's gonna go! Number 3,000 is a home run! The first man ever to hit a home run for hit number 3,000. Wade, like Tony, found his thoughts turned to family. In this case, his mom. I blew her a kiss. And, uh, it's special. Wade Boggs goes to his knees as he gets to the plate and kisses home plate. Just kissing the ground because this is the game that I've loved. It was just giving thanks back to the baseball gods. Wade then shared the moment with his son and his father. He made me what, what I am today. I mean, he, he taught me how to hit and threw tennis balls to me in the backyard. And, and the, just the look on his face was priceless. Hey, I want to thank all you guys. You've, you've uh, taken a lot of pressure and uh, made silly jokes and stuff along the way. And, and it seemed like that that uh, I was going through some rough times and uh, you guys kept picking me up. And man, you guys mean the world to me. I appreciate it so much from the bottom of my heart. And man, I love each and every one of you. I really do. Three thousand hits is a lifetime achievement, but in 1999, there were other milestones to conquer. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Kyle Ripken is first to win six-hit game. Ripken is six for six. for Juan Gonzalez. Number 1,000 for Frank Thomas. 1,000th career RBI for Matt Williams. 1,000 RBIs for Ricky Henderson. A very historic run for Ricky Henderson, passing Willie Mays. All-time hits leader from the Dominican Republic. This kid is just having a super rookie year. And he's going to tie the American League record. Number 400 in the books for Trico. Struck him out for the third time. It's not easy to win a Cy Young Award, much less to win one in each league. But that's what Randy Johnson did in his first year with Arizona. The initial reaction for me and probably most of the guys on the team was, we're glad he's on our team. He stares you down, he grunts at you, and he's six, like 6'10", 7'20", whatever you want to call it. Oh, he got it called out on strikes. 
getting ready, Josh. Oh, yeah. First time I faced him in a game with 98 with location. With, he was unhittable that night. Almost 700 strikeouts the past two seasons. It all comes down to speed. He saw 93, 94 miles an hour, and all of a sudden 98, 99, 100 miles an hour. He could be called the most dominating pitcher to ever play baseball. Got it! Swing! Jackson gets his 14th strikeout! One word says it all. Intimidating. Intimidating. There is a little bit of an intimidation factor. A lot of people say I'm intimidating because of my height, but there's nothing that I can do about that. That's wicked. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Fact is, Johnson has managed to use his height to his advantage, a rarity for a starting pitcher. He's a special athlete, one that doesn't come along very often. Guys that big usually have trouble keeping together mechanically over a long outing. That's why most big guys end up in the bullpen, but Randy is a break from that norm. He's a special competitor. Johnson was the second ever Cy Young winner in both leagues, but so was Pedro Martinez, who accomplished this feat with a bit more finesse. All those pitchers are great, and so if you rated all his pitchers, they'd be the highest, you know, that you could give him. So physically, he has all the tools. Unlike the big unit, Pedro's prowess comes in a somewhat smaller package. It's truly amazing how skinny he is and how hard he can throw. I mean, he's got fingers that are twice as long as mine, I think, which helps him get the leverage that he needs to throw as hard. Slowly but surely, more and more are realizing that Pedro Martinez is the best arm in the game. Strike three, call number 16. Pedro. What a year for Pedro, who started the All-Star game in Boston. Pitching for the American League, Pedro Martinez. He struck out five of the first six hitters he faced on his way to winning the MVP award. And they're going wild at Fenway. Cape cards, Dominican flags, and a standing O. You'd expect those kind of cheers at Fenway. But at Yankee Stadium? I was really surprised to see that the fans just torn the other way after the seventh inning. For it was there, Pedro struck out more Yankees in a game than had ever been struck out before. 15 strikeouts for the sixth time this year. Dominated. It wasn't so much of a shock to me because I knew that there were so many Dominican people there also clapping my name and yelling my name. Three. 16 strikeouts. Could he possibly get one more? Pedro Martinez with 17 strikeouts. You talk about domination. 22 in a row retired to finish the game. 22 in a row. Pedro's pitching performance in 99 was one of the game's greatest. And the remarkable thing was, he had fun doing it. I'm just a joker in the team. I don't like to be the one to be named a model or, or leader. And I just go out there and, and do my talking on the field. It's a tough thing to go out there and hit somebody when they have good stuff. But when you know and you can see it in their eyes that they know they're going to win, they know that they're pitching well, and they know that it's fun because they're pitching well, it just seems like you're very handicapped when you come up against a guy like that. Pitcher, there is no greater thrill than a no-hitter. Just ask Jose Jimenez of the Cardinals. The first no of the year, he's got it. Look at the reaction. Still another no-hitter was pitched by a twin. He struck him out. A no-hit, no-run game for Eric Milton being mobbed by the twins. No-hitters, a guaranteed place in baseball history. An historic charm filled Yankee Stadium on July 18th for Yogi Berra Day. Yogi and 50,000 of his friends were on hand for this trip down memory lane, including Don Larson, the first Yankee to pitch a perfect game. It was the perfect setting for a ball game, and early on, David Cohn had perfect stuff. If you go over some of the strikeouts, I mean, guys were missing the ball by a foot. You know, they were fooled. They were out in front. They were popping the ball up. They were striking out. I mean, I'm watching his pitches, you know, replays of the game, and he's just, he's throwing wiffle balls out there. Balls are diving and darting, and, and he was so sharp. Watching him work his game toward the end, I was, I was thinking about my game. It was fun. You get a little nervous, and the tension builds up. 
Just think how he felt. <laughs> and the 0-2. Struck him out swinging. Slider away. Strikeout number 10 for David Cohn. In Cohn's defense, his fielders were playing just as perfect, even way back in the very first inning. Lofted it out into right field. Long run for O'Neal, and he'll get there. What a play by Paul O'Neill. I thought it was in the gap, and I knew that, that kid that hit it could, could run a little bit, so I'm thinking triple. I just told everybody, truthfully, is I'm glad it was in the first inning and not in the ninth inning because, uh, you know, it would have been a lot harder play. No, those late-inning heroics would be handled perfectly by others. It's very tense out there, and, um, you know, you really just try to stay focused and try to say, hey, hit the ball to me, uh, even though you really don't want it hit to you. Hard, not block. Great backhanded play and uh, a game-saving throw, and uh, I think that's the point that everybody sensed. Uh, there's one great play usually every in one of these sort of sort of games, and that was it. And we just had it, and now we, we're going to do this thing. Two balls, two strikes on pinch hitting lefty hitter Ryan McGuire. Pitch swung on and lined to left. Coming in is Lede. He makes the catch. David Cohn is one out away from a perfect game. Your heart's thumping. You can hear it. You can feel it thumping. You know, I, I think I used the expression, I could feel my hair growing. I mean, my, my head was tingling because you could just feel the emotion in the crowd. And uh, I just thought, man, just don't let this one get away. It'll be a 1-1 pitch. He popped him up. He's going to get it. Grocious down from third. Grocious makes the catch. Ball game over. A perfect game. A perfect game for David Cohn. It is the third perfect game in Yankee Stadium history. Don Larson in 56. David Wells in 98. David Cohn in 99. David Cohn has attained baseball immortality. I pointed up in the sky at the ball as if no one knew where the ball was. I mean, it kind of feels silly now, but everyone in New York City knew where that ball was. And I remember putting my hands on my head almost in disbelief that this is going to happen. You know, I kind of dropped to my knees and looked up and saw Joe Girardi and threw a big bear hug on him and went to the bottom of the pile and I, I didn't want to let go. And it was emotional. Um, I remember, you know, being in the tunnel before the ninth inning and almost having a tear in my eye. Um, just thinking about all the great things that have happened uh, for me as being a Yankee, you know. Uh, and I was, I was overcome with emotions and we were just thanking each other and I was just holding on to him and squeezing him tight and, uh, you know, it's, it's a moment that I'll never forget and I'll never let go of. The mound was a source of many great moments in 1999, but it was the batter's box that delivered some of the grandest memories of them all. Swing sends a fly ball deep to left field. And that ball is gone. You can put it on the board. If 1998 was the year of the home run, 1999 was certainly the year of the Grand Slam. Presenting Fernando Tatis. You got to L.A., man, I tell you, the first pitch, you know, fastball, I think, was here. Bam! He locked it over there. Fernando Tatis hits a bomb in the bullpen. The thing about how many times you come up during the year with bases loaded and the odds of coming up in the same inning with bases loaded twice, that's why I say you probably have a better chance of winning the lottery. This is amazing. This is something that every baseball player looking for. I just, under, I just don't believe it. You hit two grand slams in the same inning. Don't get no better than that. There were 139 grand slam home runs hit in '99, second most of all time, and a select few went down in history. Meet Creighton Gubanich and his first big league hit. Everybody off with a 3-2 pitch, and it's hit well. Gone! A home run! First major league hit is a grand slam home run. What a night on August 9th, as an amazing five grand slams were hit throughout baseball, beginning with our old friend, Fernando Tatis. Swing and a long one. There it is. A green salami, and he smoked. 
Next, an expo. It is up, up and away, a grand slam home run for Jose Pedro. This was followed by a Florida Marlin. And a New York Yankee. There's back. It is high. It is far. It is gone. It's a grand slam. And finally, a Seattle Mariner. A drive deep to center field. Going, going, grand salami time. Goodbye, baseball. To hit a grand slam is quite a feat. Robin Ventura hit one in game one of a doubleheader. So the runners go. And the pitch hit in the air, down the right field line, towards the corner, goes Bernitz, and it's gone! A grand slam for Ventura! But the bases were loaded again in game two. Going up to the plate thinking, this is, there's just no way that this can happen again. I mean, it's absolutely impossible. Hit in the air to deep right field, looking up as Bernitz, and it's out of here! Robin Ventura with his second grand slam of the doubleheader! Two in two games is pretty impressive. But Nomar Garcia Parra took this year of the Grand Slam one better. Swing and a high drive to right field, back to the warning track, back by the bullpen. Forget about it. Grand Slam, Nomar Garcia Parra. If you would have asked me if he was going to have a night like that, I'll have my doubts because that's hard to get. You see, later in that very same game, Nomar struck again. On the way to Nomar Garcia. Pass! Went on and bounced it! Deep to left field! He has got it! His second grand slam home run! Fly away! Nomar Garcia Parra with 10 RBIs tonight! Well, I feel so lucky I got to, to see that moment, see what, what Nomar was all about and what he could do. The Cleveland Indians led the major leagues in 99 with 12 grand slams. But that was just part of the offensive explosion that came out of Cleveland. Go on in a heartbeat. Goodbye. Tell me a fly ball deep right field. Way back. That ball is gone. The Indians lineup featured a unique blend of power and speed. The result were devastating. Here comes the relay. He slides. He's safe. A triple. In fact, Cleveland became the first team in nearly 50 years to score 1,000 runs in a season. This is an offensive juggernaut. No one in baseball drove in more runs than Manny Ramirez. His 165 RBIs were the most in the majors since 1938. Swung in and drilled to deep left. Away, way, way out of here. But even Cleveland had to admire what the Cincinnati Reds did one night in Philadelphia. Aaron Boone began an airstrike that brought back memories of the big red machine. And the ball hit a long way to left field. It is a home run for Aaron Boone. Bye-bye, a home run for Demetri Young. Swing and a long drive. Watch this, baby. That is way out of here. The fourth home run of the game for the Cincinnati Reds. On hits a high drive. Left center field. And the Reds have hit their fifth home run of the night. And there's another one. A whole bunch of folks getting in on the act this evening. Pitch, Tobinson gives it a ride to deep right field. He's got himself a two-homer ball game. Brian Johnson adds his name to the list. The Reds' home run assault continued into the eighth. They needed one more blast to make history. Look out. Here's a National League record. Mark Lewis out of here. Nine home runs by eight different players on a rather memorable night at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Consistency over a long period of time was the measure of success that these men enjoyed in 99. Their slogan? At least a hit a day to keep the streak in play. So the beat goes 
his eye for Luis Gonzalez. Vladimir Guerrero, see you later. Oh, did Sean Green crush that baseball? So Vladimir continues his unbelievable hitting. Sean Green stays red hot. High fly ball. Could the streak end the game? Yes! Goodbye! his hitting streak to 30 consecutive games. 31 game hitting streak! Who better than men like these to gauge the enormity of the nearly 60 year old all time hitting streak still held by Joe DiMaggio. 28 seemed like a long time for me and uh, I couldn't imagine doing it for 28 more. That's just an incredible record. I couldn't imagine that being broken anytime soon. But with talent like this in the major leagues today, who knows? stay around four or five years because you can hit but guys who you know make careers out of this are the guys who go out there and play defense just 30 years old ken griffey jr shares the american league record with 10 gold gloves in the outfield he's the best defensive player i've ever seen and i think that's a part of his game that although gets a lot of attention is overlooked because of his home run power boy don't you just come to expect it from ken griffey jr he'll do something and you just kind of look at it, and, you, uh, and your mouth will drop open, and, and you're almost in disbelief. Back over his shoulder, back to the infield. He does it again. This guy is absolutely unbelievable. That ball is caught. Andrew Jones is the best center fielder I have seen. Andrew Jones, a diving catch. He says he's got it, and what Andrew says, Andrew does. He is the best center fielder in the game today. For Andrew Jones, spectacular catches have become the norm. Andrew just, uh, it's, it's every day. Now his great catches are almost routine. He also has put, his, put himself in a level of, uh, you think he's going to catch everything. Literally, when the ball leaves the bat, you figured, well, oh, Andrew's got it. Andrew turns tail, still going, at the wall, up the wall, he made the catch! He went up on the wall and caught the ball over his head with his feet up on the wall. And uh, I don't think that was luck. Nothing escapes Andrew. He led all outfielders in 99 with 492 putouts. But Jones wasn't the only Brave at the top of his fielding class. Pitcher Greg Maddox earned a gold glove for the 10th straight season. Maddox makes a leaping grab and then shovels it over to Klesko. In 33 games, Maddox led all Major League pitchers with 58 assists. Off of Maddox's foot, a skate save. He picked it up. Wow, what a play. And Maddox spears it. This guy has won every pitcher's gold glove in the decade of the 90s. From pitching to catching, where Ivan Pudge Rodriguez has won eight straight gold gloves. I have to do everything. Sorrento is a dead cop. The throw by Pudge. He's out at second base. Not even close. Pudge is a very, very unique and special individual. If you think about the all-around game, catching, throwing, durability, he catches every single day and loves to play the game. The total package does so many things so well, so often. What he did best was shut down opposing base runners. Yvonne threw out an amazing 54%. The league average was just 31%. Yeah. I'd like everybody to try running on me. Inside, throw down, he's out at second base. You better have a great jump from the pitcher. He has the quickest feet I've ever seen. And uh, his arm is just a bazooka. I don't know if they've ever been a better one to play the game, certainly in my lifetime, that I've been able to see. 
Robbie Alomar is in another league. Cleveland's Roberto Alomar won his eighth gold glove, too, with a season at second base that almost defied description. Swung on, hit back up the middle. Robbie Alomar behind second, gets it, spinning in the air, the throw to first in time. Wow. Ground ball on the right side, by of diving Alomar, no. He gets oh. it, throws him out. What a play by Alomar. But Robbie was just half the story. For shortstop Omar Vizquel won his seventh straight gold glove. Baseball's most dynamic defensive duo. Grabbing it is Vizquel. Rack it up. Another one to the highlight reel. We got the best two hands in, the, in those two positions. And when you have guys that are very acrobatic, a lot of good things are going to happen. And those two, Vizquel and Alomar, have turned in a whole bunch of plays. I'm not a technique shortstop. You know, I do a lot of things natural. And uh, I think that's the same way uh, Robbie played the game. You know, sometimes you see a weird flip to second base and the other way around. Back up the middle and Oh, holy cow, I can't believe it. Unbelievable. That was unbelievable. In the National League, net shortstop Ray Ordonez captured his third straight gold glove and finished the season with an all-time shortstop record of 100 straight errorless games. Well, I think what's outstanding about Ray as a pitcher is that you have a lot of confidence in your pitch selection and knowing that if you get a ground ball and it goes to that side of the infield, there's a really good chance of getting it out. He's uh, probably the most flamboyant and the most consistent and uh, the way he picks up the team, he can pick up the team with his glove just as well as an offensive player can with his bat. The Mets defense set a major league record in 99 with just 68 errors. Second baseman Edgardo Alfonso and first baseman John Olerud handled the right side. And Robin Ventura won his sixth gold glove at third base. Obviously, you know, there's a pride factor that we go out there, and now it's like, you know, there's something to live up to. Hard hit, caught Robin Ventura. Bouncer snagged by Ventura from his knee. Oh, what a circle around that one. Incredible. To Alfonso and on to first. Hit off the fist toward first. Caught by Olo and steps on first for the play. The New York Mets defense, which is absolutely Absolutely sparkle. What a way to start this 99 playoff run. Mets are down to the last chance. Everyone here in Jay Stadium standing. Bottom of the ninth inning. Base is jammed. It's a 1-1 ball game. Piazza stands in, 0 for 4 on the afternoon. Watts deals to Piazza, low and outside, it gets away onto the screen. Mora scores, the Mets win it, the Mets win it. The Mets win in game number 162, and the Mets will play again in 1999. It's the Reds and the Mets, only one of them, will advance to postseason play. And now Leiter has completed a two-hit shutout. The Mets have won the wild card in the National League. They're on their way to Arizona. The dramatic end to the regular season was just a glimpse of the playoff excitement still to come. Alfonso, a grand slam in the top of the ninth. High fly ball deep to center field. Back goes Finley, going back. Warning crack at the wall. It's out of here. It's out of here. The Mets win the ball game. The Mets win the ball game. The Mets have won the series. The Atlanta Braves and Houston Astros were tied in their division series at one game apiece. Then, Atlanta shortstop Walt Weiss with the game on the line made the play of the playoffs. Max to start, going to the plate, and they get the runner at the plate. An unbelievable play by Weiss. The Atlanta Braves celebrate a postseason series win. So the Mets and the Braves met in the championship series. Atlanta took control with a three games to one lead. But in game five, the Mets battled back. One run wins it, and we go to game six. Robin Ventura. Two nights in a row, the Braves were so close to going to the World Series. 
2-1 delivery. Robin Ventura, the Mets win! 4-3! There will be a game six! What a scene of change! The scene shifted to Atlanta for game six. And Braves fans had plenty to cheer about early on. But the Mets fought back once again. And in the seventh, look to Mike Piazza. Piazza has not had an extra base hit in the postseason. Smoltz with a 2-1 pitch and a drive in the air to deep right center field. Back goes Jordan, back to the track, looking up, and it's out of here! Mike Piazza ties the game! Tied at seven, hoping for game seven. But those hopes dissolve when Kenny Rogers lost control of a bases loaded situation. You hate for it to end on a walk. There it is. Hey, one, the Braves are in the World League. The Braves are in the World League. It sends the Braves to the World Series for the fifth time in this decade. In the American League, the defending champion New York Yankees began a quest for their 25th World Series title. And in the division series, they met the Western Division champion Texas Rangers, whom they swept aside for the second straight season. Meanwhile, Cleveland took a two games to none lead over the Red Sox. Confidence was naturally high. But back home, Boston exploded. A 23-7 round. Crank up the engine, folks. The Red Sox are headed for Cleveland. It is a distinct possibility that Martinez could be pitching here tonight. Home run, no more. Forget it. And Troy O'Leary says, take that. And it's an 8-8 game here in the fourth. And Pedro Martinez will come on and work for the Red Sox. Down two games to none. The Boston Red Sox have come storming back. And they are in the American League Championship Series. No hits allowed by Pedro Martinez from the fourth inning on. So, one of baseball's best rivalries now took a playoff stage for the first time ever. And the Yankees found their rhythm right away. Swung on a drill deep to center field. Doing back Lewis. See ya! A home run! Bernie Williams! And the Yankees take a one game to nothing lead in the best of seven. With New York up two games to none, the series moved to Boston, where past and present Red Sox pitchers faced off. The return of Roger Clemens did not go as he planned. But Pedro Martinez was once again magnificent, and he handed the Yankees their first postseason loss. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a breaking ball. Pedro with 11 strikeouts. The Red Sox take care of New York 13 to 1. But the unfazed Yankees won game four. And in the fifth game of the series, Orlando Hernandez continued his postseason excellence. El Duque's precision helped put the Yankees precisely where they fully expected to be. Line into the left field court. They're waiting for it is Spencer and the Yankees are going back to the World Series to defend their crown. It was a repeat of the 1996 World Series, one in which New York prevailed. But with all of Atlanta's success in the 90s, this was also a battle for team of the decade. Game one in Atlanta featured a surprise on the mound. A change in the pitching rotation for the Braves. Tom Glavin, slated to start tonight, has been scratched. Greg Maddox will pitch tonight against Orlando Hernandez. Neither man disappointed. And he struck him out. He is very sharp tonight. El Duque, razor sharp through his first three innings of work. But in the fourth, Chipper Jones struck a blow for the offense and the home team. Chipper Jones gets under one. first home run of this postseason. The Braves maintained their lead into the eighth when John Rocker ran into some bases loaded trouble. Hit on the ground, face hit right field. Curtis scores. Coming around third is Knobloch. The throw home is not in time. Two runs knocked in by Paul O'Neill. And in the eighth inning, the Yankees take a 3-1 lead. 
and Mariano Rivera then closed it down. Swung on and popped up off third. Brocious makes the catch. Ball game over. Yankees win. The Yankees win. In game two, the Braves turned to young Kevin Millwood, but with disastrous results. The Yankees scored early and often. More than enough for a seasoned veteran like David Cohn. You'd never want to give David Cohn a lead, but David Cohn is one of the best big game pitchers of his generation. Cohn has pitched a one-hit shutout over seven. The Yankees prevail and win the ball game 7-2. They take a 2-0 lead in the series. Back to the Bronx, where the confident Yankee fans fully expected this series to end. But the Braves had other plans. Grounded pass. Brosius and headed down the left field line. Williams will score. Boone headed for second. And the Braves have a 5-1 to one lead. Then the tide began to turn. Pitch is swung on a drill deep to right field. Going back toward, looking up. See ya! A home run, Chad Curtis. Swung on and drilled deep to right field. That ball is gone! See ya! Home run, Tino Martinez. Hit in the air to right field. Jordan back to the track, to the wall. He leaps. It is gone! It's gone! Chuck Noblock has tied the game with a two-run home run over the right field wall. Then, in the 10th, Chad Curtis earned a special place in Yankees history. Swung on a drill deep to left field. That could go. See ya. Oh, what a home run for Chad Curtis. And the Yankees win the game 6-5. And they're one win away from baseball nirvana. A four-game sweep was on the minds of everyone. And Yankees starting pitcher Roger Clemens brought a touch of the babe to the proceedings. Atlanta had no answer for Clemens in search of his first World Series title. And he starts the game with a strikeout. Clemens cruising through three. With a three to nothing lead, the Yankees defense rose to the occasion. Three tremendous plays by New York defensively. Clemens, Jeter, and maybe the best of all three, Brocious, to retire Chipper Jones. Then, pinch hitter Jim Lairitz added to his postseason legend. Swung on and hit in the air. The deep left center. It is high. It is far. It is gone. And Rivera played the role of World Series MVP to perfection. A pop in the shadow left. The New York Yankees, world champions, team of the decade, most successful franchise of the century. Yankees for the second straight year, for the third time in the last four years, and for the 25th time in their glorious history, are world champions. With 25 titles, the New York Yankees are, without question, the team of the century. Magnificent men, memorable milestones, and a litany of great moments. This rare assemblage of talent was called Murderer's Row. I am very happy to be the manager of such a great game called Golf Club as the Yankee Ball Club. Here comes Hank Bowery, he slides, makes the catch. The Yankees win their first great world championship. Fastball hit deep. A world champion and a dream season, 125 wins in our lifetime. We will probably never see this again. But the New York Yankees are just a team of 25 men. As the century came to a close, Major League Baseball recognized the top 100 players from the past 100 years. It all began on a summer day in Boston, when the living members converged with the spirit of their predecessors for an all-star celebration at Fenway Park. 
a field of dreams come true. Hometown hero Ted Williams was among those honored, and Teddy Ballgame served as the perfect bridge between baseball's past and its present. He was looking for me, and he asked me the question, when I foul a ball back, do I smell burnt wood? And I said, yeah, all the time. More than two million fans then voted on the final 30-man roster, unveiled in Atlanta before Game 2 of the World Series. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your all-century team. It's a team that spans generations, but still shares one common link. For these are the greatest baseball players of all time. Roger Clemens. Nolan Ryan. Sandy Koufax. Bob Gibson. Warren Spahn. Johnny Bench. Mark McGuire. Yogi. century player, Ken Griffey Jr. Playing against him for so many years now and having an opportunity to see him in, on that team so young is just it's amazing to me. I never pictured that, you know, I, I was on the team. I just was just looking in the, at those guys and all. And so, this season of heroes, this century of heroes, comes to a close. The 21st century now beckons, and with it the hopes and dreams of new heroes. It's taken 100 years and more than 15,000 players to assemble the most exclusive team in the history of sports, Major League Baseball's All-Century Team. Call 1-888-CENTURY to capture the game's greatest in a commemorative home video for just $19.95. Never-before-seen film lets you relive the best of baseball's last 100 years. Call today. This message has been furnished by Major League Baseball. The babe swings. It's a long one, a long one. It's in there. Another home run for the Bambino. Fastball hits. It's in there. 